Good morning, everybody. Welcome to National Distance Learning Week. This is the first presentation in a series of eight uh, over the course of the week, so we hope you'll join us throughout as your schedule permits. I'm Erin Maney. I'm the Manager of Communications and Community Engagement here at SUNY Online, and it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker today and a former colleague and friend of mine, Dave Gadu. I'm, Dave I'm a former a, friend? No, former colleague. You're still a friend. Okay. <laughs> Dave is an uh, assistant professor in computing sciences department at Finger Lakes Community College. Dave has numerous years in online education as an instructor and instructional designer, a jack of all trades. Dave has also spent time in his early career as a high school mathematics teacher, and he's known for his ability to innovate and find solutions for his colleagues to improve the design and delivery of their courses. So welcome, Dave. Very excited to see what you're going to share with us today. Thanks. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to um, just share share out like who you, who you are, what you do at the institution you are at. Uh, and I so I don't know. I guess I'll, I'll just do it alphabetically. So I see Atkinson, <laughs> comma A. If you have the ability to do it with a voice, please do. Otherwise, uh, chat is good enough. And then uh, Dana and then Gary, you're next. So make sure you start thinking about your answer. Um, <laughs> All right, so uh, Atkinson, comma A, where are you from and what do you do? So I am from Columbia, South Carolina. I work for the University of South Carolina in the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, but the reason why I'm joining this session today is because I am considering master's programs and uh, instructional design is one of the programs I'm considering. So I'm interested in what you have to share. Awesome. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry, I didn't catch your first name. Can you say it again? Amanda. Amanda, thank you so much, Amanda. All right, Dana. Good morning, everyone. Dana Salkowski, SUNY Orange. Thank you, Aaron, for posting it. I think I saw the series on LinkedIn. I had missed it probably in 14 other emails and places that we get information from SUNY. <laughs> and I was like, oh, let me add those to my calendar. I'm hoping to be able to make most of them. So uh, thank you for doing this. Um, I am the director of Senate for the Center for Teaching and Learning here at SUNY Orange. So I support our faculty. Um, I am also um, covering for my former uh, colleague and retired hired uh, friend, partner in crime, Maureen Larson, who is our academic technology director. Uh, she and I always tag teamed on, uh, on all things um, instructional design, faculty support, um, since we implemented Br Brightspace uh, two and a half years ago in phase one. So um, this is just interesting as I am always... Um, you know, carrying the torch for we can do better <laughs> for using our Brightspace um, learning management system and do better for our students and engaging them. So any and all ways that I can learn how to do that if I'm not already doing it, because I do teach DL classes, um, I'm, I'm interested so that I can then start to communicate that out to everyone else. Awesome. Thank you. And, and I really appreciate what you said about like, we can do better because we, we can always do better and that like continuous improvement. So I really appreciate that attitude. Thank you. Uh, I guess I'm up next, as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, Eric Laser, I'm out of Geneseo. Or, sorry, SUNY Genesee. So just up the road from you a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, professor of biology, just trying to see about more ways to integrate Brightspace and have a little more integration of students for the online classes. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, thank you very much. And you said you teach bio? Yes, biology. Sweet. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, and Loy, I see also Loy from GCC. Uh, always a pleasure to spend time with Loy. If you have um, a microphone, maybe you can share kind of like what you do at uh, GCC. Sure. Let me see if I can get this all working. So just so you know, I'm in a borrowed office, so I have no idea which of these cameras is working or <laughs> whether you can hear me. Okay, we can um, hear you. The camera okay. seems to be working great. All right, so I'm also at SUNY GCC, and um, I'm in charge of the Brightspace Online Student Orientation, uh, which is our, our academic and technical orientation for our, all of our students um, done in Brightspace. And I'm also adjunct faculty um, here. I teach uh, database and uh, fashion technologies. Sweet. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And so and hi, Dave. Hi, it's so good to see you again. And I, I think you're doing a disservice by not mentioning that you do like some of the most innovative stuff I've ever seen in an online course. So uh, Amanda, you might want to connect with Loy after this because Amanda's looking at instructional design and um, some of the kind of cool things you can do with that. So 
Uh, so again, like if you have any questions, you can certainly interrupt me either through like audio or you can put it in the chat. Aaron will be moderating. Uh, and just to give you a little bit of background, Aaron and I first, we cut our teeth at MCC in 2011. Uh, Aaron and I were, we had the first start day and we uh, worked there for a while. And then we, Aaron moved to SUNY and I followed her because I missed her so much. So we worked at SUNY for a few years too. Um, specifically as we were starting up the Oscar rubric and kind of like SUNY online type stuff. This is before SUNY um, de degrees at scale. So Aaron and I have been uh, buds for a number of years, and I always appreciate all the insight that she brings to the SUNY community. So thanks, Aaron, for putting this all together. My pleasure. I'm glad to be here with all of you. So I guess I'll start by sharing my screen. Um, let me see. I am the first time using technology. All right, entire screen. Can you see my screen? We can, looks good. Okay, so I, I just wanna, can you also see me? Probably, right? It doesn't matter, yep. you don't need to see me. Yep. Um, I, I just wanna give you the the kind of the background on this. And we embarked on this project at FLCC, at Finger Lakes Community College, uh, back in the dark ages of Blackboard, where, you know, you'd use a text editor and uh, you spend some time crafting exactly what you wanted to show. And then you'd hit like submit and then it kind of like stripped out like half your formatting. And that was really, really, really maddening um, for us in the computing sciences department specifically. So one of my colleagues, Aaron, invented, he wrote this software that would it would wrangle the, the, the text editor. And then when we switched to Brightspace, uh, Brightspace under the hood has some technology running called Bootstrap. Um, that nerd points, if you uh, bonus nerd points, if you know what that is or care what that is, but it basically allowed us to do some really cool things that we needed to bolt onto Blackboard. So the, the transition to Brightspace was kind of a good thing. Um, and all this kind of also came around and uh, I don't have a handout for all of you today because I kind of, um, I'll send one out later today with, with the recording Aaron said I could send it to her. But one of the things I'm going to put on there is um, uh, many of you probably know uh, Alexandra Pickett from SUNY, and she had shared with me this study, and it, it, I was like, hey, do you know of any, any, any research that talks about like course design and the efficacy for learners? And she's like, not only does this study talk about that and the better design the courses and the easier it is for the learners and, and you know, they'll do better, but it says if a course is poorly designed, not only do the students do worse, but the, the um, teacher ratings are much worse. And in some cases, teachers are uh, rated as not qualified to teach this content specifically because the course is designed poorly. So we wanted to make sure that we were able to um, address that issue with good course design. Uh, but also we we just have you know an affinity for good graphic design in the computing science department. So all, all of this to say the, the software uh, that, well, the, the skill that I hope you acquire today, or at least uh, are, um, you, you have some interest is peaked is in a language called Markdown. And it's a very, very, very simple language. Um, and it's text-based. And the, the whole point of Markdown is you can have kind of your ground truth for whatever content you're designing, you can have it in a text file. And, it, and when I say text file, there's like no headers, no heading one, no heading two, no heading three. Um, it's all it's all just like kind of like shortcuts. Like less. And then you can take that markdown and put it in a bright space and it will beautify it according to the bright space standards. And you can take that markdown and put it in Blackboard and it will, it will like translate it into the Blackboard and make it look pretty. So, um, and markdown is really, 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 really common. So. The, the way that I'm going to approach today is I'm going to show you some of the very basic commands in Markdown and show you kind of like what it looks like. And then we'll talk about like how you can apply that to Brightspace to kind of like beautify things. So I'm just going to give you a small, small, small subsample of what Markdown looks like. Um, and probably most of you are aware that you can make text look bold um, or underlined or italic. And uh, you can do headings, like heading one, heading two, heading three, which if you're not using styles or, or headings in your Microsoft Word or Google Docs and you're not using headings in Brightspace, you definitely should because it has a wealth of value, including but not limited to accessibility. So screen readers oftentimes will read like heading one. And if the person using a screen reader is like, 
I already know what that says. I can skip those paragraphs. The screen reader can skip down to heading two or heading three. You can go from heading heading, uh, but it also gives you all sorts of like crazy cool things you can do in um, just in designing. So I'm going to show you very simple things. And again, I'm going to send you a cheat sheet later and the software that I'll be demoing today has a cheat sheet built into it, but it is more expansive than what we're covering today. So I'll be sure to give this to you because my hope is by the end of our time today, you'll feel brave enough to kind of try this once or twice before part two, which is Thursday. And um, in the part two session, we'll kind of, you know, answer any questions that you might have and then move on to kind of the, the, the really like heightening the curb appeal of your course. So if you were say to type in a text file, you could say like, this is a basic text file. Um, this has some really neat text. So I'm just gonna show you what this is. This is exactly what Markdown looks like. And I'm gonna copy that. And then I know, again, this is gonna be a very pedestrian example but I'll put it in this paste in this paste it here. And you can see that if we surround text with one asterisk, then it becomes italicized. And if we surround it in two asterisks, it becomes bold. And that's the, essentially what Markdown is. And you kind of have to know some of the other features that you can do in Markdown. So for instance, you could do one pound sign and say like, uh, let's say that we're, uh, we're talking about math and we're in a geometry class that's called heading one and you can see what it looks like there it just you know makes geometry look big and you can have whatever text you want let's say that we have two paragraphs and you can see it kind of waits until i'm done writing before we'll render that and i think what i'm going to do is i kind of want those paragraphs to be meteor And then maybe you have like heading two. So maybe geometry, maybe we're talking about triangles. So heading two would be two of these. And you just say triangles. And maybe you have some text about triangles. Uh, and then maybe you are talking about circles. And so you can have some text there. Uh, and then you can have like a third level if we just, you know, maybe we're, when we talk about triangles, we're talking about isosceles triangles. So now you can have like this third text. And with this particular software, you can also left align it or keep it centered um, as far as the heading is concerned. So that's the basic premise of what we're doing. Um, and I'd like to show you kind of like some samples of what it looks like and, and why you might want to do this in Brightspace. So in my Brightspace course, this, this is a, an FYE course we have for our computer our computer science learners. And um, I like it because if nothing else, I can do, this is actually called Jumbo, oops. This is called Jumbotron where you see this big bar. And I like it because if you have subfolders, so for instance, in this, um, let's look at this computational, actually we'll look at careers and planning, that's where I am right now. The career landscape is a subfolder. Personality test is a subfolder, resume. So there's an awful lot of content in here. So just by putting these jumbotrons in, we're able to, at first glance, parse the content mm -hmm. into digestible sections. So there, there should be little ambiguity if someone's coming into Brightspace, even for the first time, um, they, they might see that like we have, oh, so that's like a, a chapter in this unit. And this is like a chapter in this unit. Um, so so I, I like using the jumbotron and I'll show you the jumbotron. Actually, I'll show that to you right now. And Dave, just one quick question. I just wanted to clarify. So in Markdown, you can copy and paste in or type directly in. So, so the way that it works, that's a great question. And thank you for bringing that up. So the way that this would work is you can pay you this software. And actually, I'll, I think I'm, I'm going to put this right in the chat right it now. Um, oh, thanks. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> wow, Aaron, you're so good. Uh, so th this is a software that Aaron developed. And, um, and not and this the, Aaron, the, let's just clarify. Sorry, thank you. Not yeah. this Aaron, uh, Aaron Sullivan, who teaches uh video game design at, at Finger Lakes Community College. Um, Aaron, Aaron Sullivan developed this software, and the way that it works is you take this text and then 
you can copy the HTML. I mean, I guess you could go here, select all and copy, but that's exactly what this copy HTML button does. And then in Brightspace, um, I guess I'm just going to go into a, a course that's live. I won't publish, don't worry. Um, and then I'll just pick a chapter. Uh, I'll pick this chapter. Maybe I won't pick this chapter. There it is. And in any particular subfolder, I'm just going to create a web page. And you, you're right. You cannot paste the markdown in here. Although, before I paste in, I do want to show you that Brightspace does support. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. It does support some minor, um, some minor, minor um, uh, markdown naturally. And by the way, Google Docs also supports that. In fact, if you want to in impress your friends, next time you're leaving a comment in Google Docs, you can't, you cannot um, decorate your text with italics in Google Docs, but you can use Markdown to do bold and italics, which is really cool. So if you if you ever want, you know, and, and I don't I actually don't know if this will work in. Um, in Microsoft Word, but uh, it, it is kind of a cool way to put decorated text in comments. So mark, Markdown, some lightweight Markdown is supported in Brightspace naturally. It's also supported in Google Docs naturally. It's also supported in Outlook naturally. If you type things in, oops. Oh, and that of course didn't work because I had a space there. I don't know why that's not working. Um, but at any rate, um, it, Markdown is supported in a number of places. In fact, one of the first, one of the best places I use it and I, I, is when I use ChatGPT, one of the problems that I have with Brightspace, and, and I, I know this is such a roundabout way to answer your question, but I promise you an answer is coming. Um, one of the problems I have with Brightspace is when you, um, which class am I in here? When you post a video in an announcement in Brightspace, normally the announcements get emailed to the learners. However, 